White Hughes, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Born and raised in Cedar Rapids and part of Hughes Nursery and Landscaping and a part of the Economic Alliance and the Chamber of Commerce for my whole lifetime. The original founding group to celebrate agriculture as we know it today was myself and Tom Glantz, who just now retired off the committee after 37 years. But before that, and, and along for so many years, was Dick Freeman, our county extension director, Kristen Connor, the staff person from the Chamber of Commerce, Nancy Berrickman from Extension, Terry Riley, and Nancy Lowenberg from US Bank. So we took an opportunity to expand our influence about agriculture with the Chamber of Commerce in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And at this point in time, Ag Day was a new national pressure from a lot of agribusiness people across the country to have an agriculture day. So we tied into that and I said to Larry Waller, who was a chamber exec, that one of the things that we could maybe do was have an Ag Day dinner. So what did the event look like in 1987? And here's a card, which is really a ticket for that event. We didn't have any tradition. We didn't have any history. We'd never had it before. We didn't have any money. It was pretty easy to call the president of Iowa State University, who was Gordon Eaton at the time, a new president and invite him to come and speak about agriculture in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And uh, it was a very good event. We had uh, 378 people show up at the very first event. But the interesting thing was that we accomplished our mission by having tables purchased by agribusiness companies and a lot of production agriculture people there as well. It wasn't long after that that we had a committee meeting and we looked at what happened right and what happened that could be made better. And the question was, did we really celebrate agriculture? And all of a sudden that word was stuck in Kristen Connor's mind. She was on the staff at the Chamber of Commerce. So we applied it and started to call it the celebration of agriculture. So we've had two major impacts that took a hit on us uh, and perhaps challenged us to make sure that we were resilient. And the first one was a change in leadership at the chamber and there was discussion and they decided that the celebration of agriculture wasn't that important. And so they were going to dis discharge us from their agendas. And fortunately we had our customer list and for half a dozen years we met in our family room in my family home and there was a half a dozen of us and it grew to seven or eight we opened a checking account and we still had Celebration of Agriculture. And then after new leadership came in and there was a different culture and a different business model, we went back to the chamber and, and lobbied them, saying to them that we were an important part of events in Cedar Rapids. We were representing a, a major economic part of our community and we were bringing in high profile people and we thought it would be important for the chamber to be a part of that. And they agreed, and ever since then, they've been uh, basically our major sponsor, and we meet in their facility, and we're very thankful for that relationship. The second obstacle was we were growing faster than our facility at the Marriott was able to handle us. And uh, after a lot of stress and debate and talk for three years, we did move downtown to Cedar Rapids to the Doubletree, and before that it was the five seasons and we got a room that we can accommodate up to a thousand people and my goal is to get as many people under the tent as we can but up to this point we're we're averaging about 700 people at the attendance each year and so it's been a real success some of our committee members thought that we could reach out and service and and provide some help and service to other people so they came up with the canned food idea many years ago and they suggested that people who were coming to Celebration of Agriculture could provide a canned good product that could be then given to HACAP for the food pantry and, and we could support some more families who are nutritionally challenged. Well, interestingly enough, it wasn't as successful as any of us hoped. Number one, the table sponsors didn't always get that message to the people who were coming. 
Number two, it's kind of cumbersome and it's not real creative to walk into a nice sit down meal with a can of food in your hand. All of a sudden sitting around the table, one of our committee meetings, it, it popped out of my mouth by accident. You know, if, if we're really serious about furnishing supplies to needy families, why don't we just pass the hat? It'd be a lot simpler to pass the hat around the table and let people donate at free will, give that money to HACAP. Well, that really triggered an enormous support and we were able to not only furnish money, but to furnish financing to get other donated items like hogs and cattle processed for HACAP. So that's been a real earmark of our success as a committee pushing out into the community and helping other people. In addition to that, as we developed over the years, we brought 4-H FFA students into our program, giving the invocation, doing the Pledge of Allegiance, supporting us by being guides, getting people to their tables. And it's been a real nice way to include younger people and let them get experience to what we're trying to promote in the way of agriculture through the metropolitan area. So if you look at our speaker list, the most impressive part of the whole list is we've had six former United States Department of Agriculture heads. We've had eight media people. We've had several economists. We've had a lot of people from agribusiness. But that's the key to our success in my view is being able to attract speakers and bring them into Cedar Rapids. Tyne Morgan was one of our very best speakers. She's the host, as you know, of U.S. Farm Report. We brought her into Cedar Rapids. She did interviews with people. She toured the community. And then her next Sunday show focused on Cedar Rapids. That's uh, valuable information, valuable public relations, and really an opportunity for us to blow the horn of Cedar Rapids at a no cost and it would cost thousands and thousands of dollars to get that kind of publicity and advertising. Why celebrate agriculture in Cedar Rapids, Iowa? And the obvious answer to me is that we are the grain processing capital of the world. We have 26 firms processing grain every single day in Cedar Rapids, both corn and soybeans. And they're distributing that product all over the world. We have over a thousand grain trucks coming in from farms from the surrounding area as far as 100 miles away every day. And we have over 100,000 rail cars bringing grain into our city for processing. And as soon as you leave the city limits on any direction, you just see farm field after farm field after farm field, corn and soybeans as far as you can see. So we're actually the breadbasket of not only Eastern Iowa, but of the state and, and of the world, as people say. So agriculture is extremely important to our economic development and all of the people that live in this metropolitan area. So let's take a look at the last 37 years. We've had nearly 20,000 guests for dinner to celebrate agriculture in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We've had 30 different speakers, over 30 speakers come in from out of state, in a couple of exceptions out of country, and talk to us about the promise, the potential, and the future of agriculture. So every one of you here tonight, and all of you sitting around these tables, and all the people before you need to be thanked and feel really good about how special we are to have an event annually in Cedar Rapids, Iowa to celebrate agriculture and to understand how fortunate we are in Iowa, in the Midwest, and America as we take care of feeding people globally around the world. Thank you so very much.